Hi, Bruno Jr. here. Our podcast, Busting Addiction and Smiths, is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com. SafeHouse believes that traditional treatments fall short of the needs of clients who face the modern problems of addiction. Modern problems need modern solutions. Multiple addictions, multiple relapses, multiple triggers, and cheaper and more powerful street drugs set up unprecedented challenges facing treatment centers. What is needed is a more sophisticated approach, a better way forward. There are three reasons to choose our progressive modern treatment program. One, a more sophisticated intake process. Two, technology proven to enhance recovery. And three, the most robust aftercare program in our sector. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com. Episode 7, Season 9. What are you so ashamed of? One of the main obstacles, perhaps the greatest obstacle to getting the help an addict needs is the shame that comes with addiction and alcoholism. You feel a sense of shame whether you're the parent of an addict or whether you yourself happen to be the addict or alcoholic. This is how bad it really is. One of the premier not-for-profits in the field of addiction is called Shatterproof. If you find that you respect the work that they do, by all means, donate to them at www.shatterproof.org. Here's the bad news. During 2020 alone, more than 93,000 people died from overdoses in the U.S., the highest number in history. At the same time, more than 20 million American adults continue to suffer from the disease of addiction. The COVID-19 pandemic has only made things much worse by increasing economic instability, imposing social isolation, and reducing access to harm reduction, treatment, and recovery services. This is what they had to say after analyzing the results of a national survey among almost 8,000 U.S. residents, and the results are disheartening to say the least. I thought we had made more progress than what I saw. The levels of stigma measured by the survey are astonishing. Quote, despite decades of public education, 75.2% of the public do not believe that a person with a substance use disorder, SUD, is experiencing a chronic medical illness like diabetes, arthritis, or heart disease. Moreover, 53.2% of respondents hold the belief that SUD is caused by a person's bad character. Stigmatizing attitudes from the public are connected to broad levels of discrimination felt by those with SUD. Put more simply, people with SUD, substance use disorder, addicts, alcoholics, recovering or not, feel like they do not belong in normal society. The italics, the... uh, The underlining here are those of the writer. They do not feel like they belong in normal society. This is not just an opinion. 45.5% of the public is unwilling to live next to or be close friends with someone with an SUD. You would think that healthcare professionals would be somewhat more enlightened, but no. It turns out that 44.5% of healthcare professionals surveyed expressed the harmful belief that medications for opioid use disorder were substituting one drug addiction for another. Addiction stigma, which is fueled by shame, and discrimination experienced by those with a substance abuse disorder, SUD, leads to tens of thousands of preventable deaths every year. It prevents many with an SUD from ever seeking treatment or from having a family member suggest treatment. It creates isolation by having the public less willing to have someone with an SUD as a friend, neighbor, or co-worker. It feels an ongoing feeling of shame that serves as an obstacle to long-term health for those with an SUD. Almost half, 46.1% of respondents with an opioid use disorder expressed feelings of feeling ashamed of themselves. Among our clients at Safe House, we have found that over half of the parents or caregivers who come to us for help 
do not believe that addiction is a disease unto itself. They believe instead that there was some moral failing, some weakness of character or a lack of willpower that was causing the addiction. And that their Johnny just needs to be straightened out. Sure he does, but for he is mighty twisted from what we can see. The bottom line is this. I'll quote from the Shatterproof Executive Summary. With the American public displaying discriminatory views against this community, which can vary by race and other demographic characteristics, people with SUD are forced to endure prejudice, social exclusion, and ongoing harm. These views erode self-worth, create social isolation, and reduce access to care, which exacerbates the problem. In addition to clouding the nation's ability to coalesce around meaningful solutions, including treatment, harm reduction, and recovery support and services. This is scary stuff. At the core, despite decades of public education campaigns and the hard work of individuals who have shared their addiction stories, few Americans accept addiction as the treatable disease that it is. In fact, the survey found that less than One quarter of respondents view addiction as a chronic disease. Perhaps the most damaging aspect of the stigma associated with addiction is the antiquated belief that addiction is the result of an individual's irresponsibility. This is a tricky issue. In the beginning, when Johnny was, say, 16 years old and tried marijuana, he had some choice in the matter. At some point, however, he lost the power of choice and became irreversibly addicted to the drug. Unfortunately, despite decades of anti-stigma efforts, over half of respondents indicated that a person's SUD is caused by their own bad character and that lack of moral strength is likely a causal factor. What do you think of that after all this time and all this so-called progress and enlightenment? This creates an environment where individuals feel unwelcome and rejected. This can happen in your own home. If you go about judging your loved one with a how-could-you attitude, or he, he or she will not be looking to you or anyone else for help, your loved one will stay in a state of shame, despair, and isolation, and you will walk around angry and resentful. Remember, addiction is a family disease. Moreover, it is a societal disease. Social isolation can have significant consequences for a person's physical, emotional, and cognitive health and has been identified as a clear risk factor for increased likelihood of substance use and overdose. Even if you find that there's not much you can do for your loved one other than take better care of yourself and keep encouraging him or her to get help one way or another, Perhaps even by an intervention, you can help enlighten the world around you by making making it known that addiction is a treatable disorder, period. Even if you didn't at first believe it yourself, that's the least you can do to bust the myth that addiction is the result of a moral failing. This is very important stuff. So, what did we learn in this essay about the stigma of addiction? We learned that, one, the level of prejudice against those with SUD substance use disorder is astonishingly high. Only one quarter of adults believe that SUD is a chronic disease. Two, the stigma associated with the SUD is the cause of thousands of preventable deaths every year, as shame is holding back even those who want help. Three, The main effect of stigma is social isolation that keeps even those recovering from a SUD from fully participating in society. Four, even medical professionals are not immune to stigma and myths associated with SUD, such as the use of medications to treat opioid use disorder. Five, you can only do so much on your own. Get in touch with shatterproof.org and learn what you can do in your own home town, in your own home, and in your own hometown to help enlighten our society. Our podcast is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com, a modern approach to recovery. To learn more, visit us at SafeHouseRehab.com.